أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال نسمة في المدينة امرأة عزيز ترابل فتاها عن نفسه قد شرفها حبا إنا لنراها في ضلال مبين فلما سمعت بمكرهن أرسلت إليهن واعتدت لهن متكاه لهن متكأ وأتت كل واحدة منهن سكينا منهن سكينا وقالت اخرج عليهن فلما رأينه أكبرنه وقطعن أيديهن وقل حاش لله ما هذا بشرا إن هذا إلا ملك كريم قالت فذلكن الذي لي فيه ولقد راودته عن نفسه فاستعصم وَلَئِنْ لَمْ يَفْعَلْ مَا آمُرُوا لَيُسْجَنَنَّ وَلَيَكُونَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْهِ وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِمْ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ فَصَرَفَ عَنْهُ كَيْدَهُنَّ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ ثم بدا لهم من بعد ما رأوا الآيات ما يسجننه حتى حين صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم Continue the tafsir and the commentary of Surah Yusuf And we reach the point where the minister, minister's wife tried to seduce as a Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam and she got caught but she lied and she put the blame on as a Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam that he was actually after me and not me after him and then at that time in order to preserve the purity of as a Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam there was an infant child infant child there who spoke out and mentioned that if because obviously while she was chasing him the cloth from his back from the gown that he was wearing he, she ripped it from the back so obviously that infant child said look um, if the gown is ripped from the front then that is a sign that he was seducing her and if the gown is ripped from the back then that is a sign that she is seducing him so obviously it was out in the open and the minister completely understood what was going on here. At the end of the day, what he did was he told us Yusuf والسلام, that just overlook this shortcoming on behalf of my wife and don't mention it to anyone. And then he said to his wife that وَاسْتَغْفِرِ لِذَنْبِكِ إِنَّكِ كُنْتِ مِنَ الْخَاطِئِينَ You seek forgiveness for your sin. From this we also learn sometimes sins are committed or not committed and Sometimes it's also, it's good to actually give them the tarheeb and the encouragement that look, okay, these things happen, it's happened, now you do istighfar, you seek forgiveness, okay. do tawbah. Because we all make mistakes, we all do wrong, we all human beings at the end of the day. So you can say, obviously, when a person continues doing something wrong all the time, then then, then it's a big issue, then it's a major issue. But nobody, nobody in relationships, sometimes some things go wrong, then it's good to say, okay, bye, you know, seek forgiveness, do tawbah, and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc. I just think this was a big uh, accusation at the end of the day. And this was like adultery, zina, fornication. But even then, uh, uh, the minister, what did, he, what did he say? Seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Khair. Now, although he instructed the Yusuf not to mention this to anyone what has happened. Allah makes a mention here. وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ امْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِلُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ Some women of the town said, the minister's wife attempts to seduce her slave to fulfill her motives. So meaning, though as a Yusuf was instructed to keep the matter a secret, the news somehow reached the women of the town. Normally that always happens, no matter how you seek it, you keep it, it just reaches. I mean, next thing you know, what happened here? I told you, hush, hush. And 
Sometimes we won't know who spreads it. Now sometimes you just make sure it's a secret. Don't tell anyone. He's the first one to go tell someone. Hey, no one will tell someone. Hey. Anyway, what happened is that they began to gossip among themselves and express disbelief that a married woman of noble class, because noble class, she's the wife of the minister, Allah Akbar, could become infatuated with a slave because he was a slave. She lost it. You can find so many men of high class who she could have went after. But she goes after a slave. So there's something that they couldn't understand. Because neither were they compatible in rank, nor were they compatible in age. Yet she was, she was seducing him and she was fluctuating khair. So the only reason they saw was, as mentioned here, قَدْ شَغَفَهَا hubba. Love has certainly overwhelmed her. Love has certainly overwhelmed her. This is the only reason they saw that they said, look, sometimes when love like this, we're saying love is blind. Love is blind, then you don't look at age, rank, nothing. You're blindly in love, that's it. Sometimes even before marriage, if someone is in love with someone, Right, I'm getting married to that no matter what happens. No matter how many times you explain to the person this, that, whatever, she's not right for you or he's not right for you. And they're from different uh, upbringing, different thing, different age, this, that, whatever. It could cause problems later. But love is blind no matter what. Yes, that's it. So, inna la naraha fi dalali mubin. Indeed, we deem her to be in manifest error. Now, when she, the minister's wife, heard of their plot, as mentioned earlier, when she heard of their plot, she sent for them and prepared a meeting place for them. Okay. Now the word here which has been used is plot. Because although they seem to be merely gossiping, the actual plan was that they wanted her to show Hazrat Yusuf to them. They wanted to see him. So, it mentions here that when she heard of their plot, she sent for them and prepared a meeting place for them, setting cushions there. She gave each of them a knife. Meaning, a big banquet, a big dawat. For all the women. And she gave one of them a knife. Some one of us say that that was how the posh people, the people of the high class, that's how they used to eat the food in them days as well. They used to have a knife, etc. Okay. Some commentaries have stated that she gave them the knife to cut some meat that they could, that they could not eat by merely biting. So it had to be cut. So that's why the knife was given. Others commented to stay that the knives were to cut some fruit like oranges, which they also needed cutting, or apples or whatever. A rare form of Quranic recitation, another Qirat, supports this opinion because it contains the word muttaka'a, which is translated as citron or orange. Alama Alusi Rahimullah in his Kitab Ruhul Ma'ani has actually reported this recitation from Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, Imam Mujahid, Imam Qatar Rahimullah. Okay, at the precise moment, what happened when the women were cutting? The minister's wife called Azay Yusuf Salam, saying, "Come out." For Yusuf, come out before them. When they saw him, when they were taken back and cut their hands, they cut their hands. Meaning, they were so gobsmacked of the beauty of Hazrat Yusuf and she was actually trying to say to them, Zulikha, that you're criticizing me, why I've fallen blind in love with him, now you have a look and now you, now you know the reason why I fell in love, because of his beauty. He was very handsome. Okay. Allah had bestowed as a Yusuf والسلام, with exceptional beauty. Exceptional beauty. Rasulullah met him 
when he went on Miraj and he said indeed he has been conferred half the beauty of the world. Half the beauty of the world has been granted to us in Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahu Akbar. Among the Sahaba, there's another Sahabi, his name is Hazrat Dihya Kalbi radiallahu ta'ala. He was also granted so much beauty by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was very, very handsome. He was so handsome that when he used to go out, the women used to from their houses try to have a glimpse. That's how handsome he was. And it's also mentioned in narrations that when Hazrat Jibreel used to come with any message, any work, any revelation. Okay? Majority of the times, he would come in the form of a human being. And he would take the form of Hazrat Dahiya Kalbi radiallahu ta'ala the sahabi. There were times when Hazrat Jibreel would come in his original form. And there were times when he would come Akbar, in the form of a sahabi, in the form of a human being. And that would be none other than Hazrat Dahiya Kalbi radiallahu ta'ala. Because angels are beautiful as well. Angels are full of noor, the creator of noor and light. So therefore, Allah Akbar, he would come in the form of the Dahi Akalbi radiallahu ta'ala. So when they cut off the hands, وَقُلْنَا حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا Then, Allah Akbar, they're taken back and they say, Allah Akbar. They cut their hands and exclaim, Allah is pure. Allah is pure. مَا هَذَا إِلَّا مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا this cannot be a human being. This cannot be a human being. In Hada illa Malakun Kareem, he is surely a noble angel. Little Farishta. Looks like an angel. Allah. Just think, why would Hazrat Zuleika call the women for this banquet? She must have had so much yaqeen on the beauty of us, Yusuf Salam, that she knew that what was going to happen, what was going to be the reaction. That's why he called. She called this banquet and she called this dawah. Otherwise, she would have called. Great scholars mention, just as, 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 just as Zuleika had so much yaqeen and certainty on the beauty of the Yusuf Salam, do we have that same certainty on the beauty of Islam? Do we have the same yaqeen and certainty on the beauty of Islam that Islam is beautiful? Islam is great. There's no faults, there's no errors. There's no defects. It's a beautiful religion. It's full of beauty. Do you have that level of yaqeen that the level that Zuleika had regarding Yusuf Salam, to that extent that she was ready to call all the women for that da'wah? Allah. That's why sometimes we feel very weak in giving da'wah to others, especially non Muslim of Islam, because we ourselves are in doubt. We ourselves do not have that 100% yaqeen. We ourselves are in doubt in certain laws of Islam. Maybe this, maybe that, maybe this. May Allah Ta'ala grant us a true understanding about the beauty of Islam. So they said, Mahada Basha, this cannot be a human being. Hada illa Malikun Kareem, you show a noble angel. Qalat Fazali kunna ladidum tunna nifi. She said, this is what you were criticizing me for. This is it. وَلَقَدْ رَاوَدْتُهُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ فَاسْتَعْصَمْ Indeed, I attempted to seduce him to achieve my motives. فَاسْتَعْصَمْ But he escaped. He escaped. Why? He's a prophet of Allah. He's a Nabi of Allah. But guna and sin, Allah Akbar. Immediately, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ I can't do that. Now just think, as I mentioned before, he was alone in the house. A lesson for any one of us that we are alone, no one's watching, no one's seeing. We got all the means to commit all the gunas that we can. But at that time, we have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We abstain. SubhanAllah, that is taqwa. That is fear of Allah. That is piety. No, it's not easy to do. It's not easy. Today to commit zina, there were times when to commit zina, you have to go out somewhere. You have to go around two hours, three hours, wherever, make sure no one sees you, etc. Now you don't need to go out, it's, in, it's on your phones. You can be in your room and you can be committing zina, Allah Akbar, anywhere in the world. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. But fear of Allah is when, when you're alone. When someone is watching and you don't do something, that's not because you fear Allah, that's because, because you're afraid of, afraid of humiliation. 
that someone might catch you and you be humiliated and disgraced because everyone's izzat and honor is it's, it's something. But the real fear of Allah is when there's no one there and you've got all the opportunity and the chance to commit that particular sin and guna and then a person, na'udhu billah. No, I cannot. That is taqwa. That is piety. That is khawfi khuda. That is fear of Allah. That's why in the Quran Kareem, so many times Allah mentions, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu taqu Allah. Ya ayuhal nasu taqu rabbakum. Ittaqullah, 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 fear Allah, fear Allah, fear Allah. Meaning fear that day when Allah wa ta'ala will hold us accountable for all the bad action that we have done. Because nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may carry out an act thinking no one's watching, but then at that time we have forgotten it's not hidden from Allah. Yeah, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. When she was trying to seduce him, immediately, no way. Na'udhu That's not me. I cannot do that. I cannot displease my Lord, my Creator. No. And that's when Allah's mercy descends. That's when Allah's help comes. That's when Allah's rahmat comes. That's when the barakah comes. That's when the sukoon of the heart, peace of the heart, because when a person commits sins, that person doesn't get sukoon of the heart. He doesn't get peace of the heart. That person will never be content. No. So that's why time and time again in Quran Kareem, Allah mentions, Ittaqullah, fear Allah, fear Allah. Even at the time of the khutbah of the nikah, in marriage, what are the verses that are recited in the khutbah of the nikah? Ya ayyul nasu taqu rabbakum ulladhi khalakakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaka minha zawjaha. Another verse, Ya ayyul ladhi na'amun taqu Allah haqqa tuqati. All refer to taqwa, fear of Allah, fear of Allah. So when a person is God conscious, then during this marriage, that person will never commit sinna. When a person has fear of Allah, he will never commit sinna. May Allah tell him. When a person has a fear of Allah, then obviously he will do everything to gain the pleasure of Allah. He will abstain from anything to gain the displeasure of Allah. And that is Hayat al Tayyibah, pure Zindagi, pure life. When you talk about pure life, it is a life of piety and righteousness and taqwa and abstaining from guna and sin. That is life purity. So, this is what you were criticizing more. Me for indeed I attempted to seduce him to achieve my motives, but he escaped. If he does not do as I command him, he shall certainly be imprisoned and he will be definitely he will definitely become of those humiliated. Meaning she's still adamant I will do us achieve my motives really, no matter what. And if he doesn't do what I say, I'll send him to prison. Blackmail. Blackmail is taking place. You're blackmailing someone. You do as I say, otherwise, because she's she's from the house of the minister, power, and people have power. Sometimes they can do whatever they want. Who's going to listen to that slave? That's why sometimes people, when they do zulam and oppression, what do they do? They look, they calculate. If they don't, we have been the majority. We have more power, and that's it. Who's going to listen to him? Who's going to listen to her? Who's going to listen to that group? No power, no support, no one, nothing. You know? And that's what happens. We tend to forget we can do all the planning and plotting and scheming, just like they were plotting, plotting and scheming. Allah Akbar. But Allah has his own plans as well. Allah has his own plans. Wallahu khayrun makini. And Allah is the best of plans. Yes, all this, all this test and trial and difficulty that the Yusuf Islam was going through, but where was Allah going to take him? To the throne of Egypt. To the throne of Egypt. Then 
Yusuf prayed, قَالَ رُبِّ السِّجْنُ وَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْ Oh my Rabb, the prison is dearer to me than that towards which these women call me. No, I cannot do zina. I cannot go towards that. I'd rather go to prison than do this. Not even for one second could they ever bear the displeasure of Allah. Not for even one second could they bear committing a sin and guna. They'd rather be imprisoned than gain the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then be disloyal to Allah. Then be disobedient to Allah. Allah. Now, if you were in this sort of situation, what will happen? People sell the Iman, sell the Islam. Their loyalty towards Allah is out of the window. It's easy to claim, easy to say, easy for me to give a speech and talk. But when we're in that situation, that is a real test. May Allah Ta'ala say, God, our Iman and Islam. So then, Then he makes dua to Allah. If you do not avert their plot from me, I shall incline towards them and become of the ignorant. Allah Akbar. Now, even though Amiya were protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from committing sins, as a Yusuf made his dua because of his profound aversion to sins. He feared because of those who do not practice their knowledge. He doesn't want to be among those people who do not practice their knowledge. So, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ So his Rabb accepted his prayer. فَصَرَفَ عَنْهُ كَيْدَهُنَّ And averted their plot from him. إِنَّهُ وَالسَّمِعُ الْعَلِيمُ Undoubtedly he is all heeding or knowing. What happened? Allah Ta'ala made it such that Hazrat Yusuf Ali Salatu Wasalam eventually was sent to jail. He was sent to jail. The minister and his advisor were concerned about the situation. Although they realized that Yusuf was innocent, something had to be done to brush it under the carpet, brush this whole issue because to go out is, is rumors spreading everywhere. So to quell the growing speculation in the town, since the women were carrying many tales to their husbands, from this we also know the women carry more tales than the men. You spread the rumor, tell a woman and they'll do it. And Allah makes a mention of that in the Quran Kareem. Ya you and Ladina Amun Ayas Khal Qawmi bin Qawmi Asa Yikulu Khayna bin Hum Wala Nisa Min Nisa And not a woman above for another woman. Don't tell, don't uh, ridicule and mock. Make them have a habit. Allah Akbar. Therefore after reviewing the signs, the innocence of Hazrat Yusuf Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is occurred to them that they should imprison him for a while until it all, this, all becomes, all of this cools down. Allah there's many other things that can be mentioned regarding, regarding this. Inshallah, we'll continue next week. May Allah Ta'ala wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to follow the teachings of the Quran, the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and abstain from guna and sins and live a life of purity, live a life of loyalty to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and live a life of taqwa. Subhanallah, we have to Subhanallah, we have to keep. Yeah, I mean, so I was asked away, the brothers and requested to say, but we'll allow her three times to pay the sawab and remote to you, inshallah. May Allah grant them jannah to be those. So all those who are ill, may Allah grant them shifa and cure, inshallah. It's all a reminder for our life as well, and a time will come when we have to depart from this world as well. So constantly, subhanAllah, live a pious and righteous life, inshallah. May Allah give us a tawfiq and prepare for the hereafter. May Allah grant summer and patience to the family members as well.